So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Akamai's intelligent platform, um, what's involved in peering with Akamai, how to go about doing traffic engineering with Akamai, and then we'll summarize everything and we'll open it up to questions and answers if we have time. Uh, the Akamai Intelligent Platform is a very, very widely distributed collection of machines that do a variety of things, including, of course, serving traffic that you're all familiar with and used to, I suspect, by now. Uh, but also, we collect a lot of data about the Internet, and we're able to measure a lot of things about the Internet and about connectivity and speed of uh, operations and whatnot. So the basic technology is what we call mapping. And by that, we mean deciding how we deliver traffic um, to an end user. When an end user requests a web page, the first thing they'll do is they'll go to DNS and they'll say, you know, how do I translate this name into an IP address? We use that step in the process to actually look at what name server they're coming from. If the name server provides us the information about the end user through uh, eDNS client subnet information, we'll make use of that information as well and we try to identify the best cluster to serve the traffic to the end user based on that, and we will give them back A records and quad A records which correspond to that cluster. Um, the best cluster is not necessarily the closest. It's not necessarily the one with the lowest latency. Uh, quite often, best includes a number of other factors which include the cost of bandwidth, the um, loading of the bandwidth and of the server, the likelihood that the server we're sending the user to will contain the content that they're about to request, and several other factors. Uh, we really have a lot of different metrics that are available to us that we use in making these mapping decisions. Um, there's two ways that CDNs work. Uh, we use this map-based system that I just described. The other popular mechanism is what's called AnyCast, which uh, instead of intervening in the DNS request, most AnyCast CDNs will simply allow BGP to route the user to the server that is closest to them and hope that they don't have any collisions. Um, users querying a DNS-based CDN will get different A and quad A records depending on where they're coming from. Uh, that's what we call mapping and the better the mapping, the better the, the CDN will work. And we like to think we've got a pretty good mapping system. Um, here's an example of um, A records coming from different places. You'll notice in New York City, he gets A records that start with 207, but when he comes to Boston, even though he's asking for the same name, he gets A records that start in the 81 net. Um, this is because he's literally being mapped to two different Akamai sites, depending on whether he's in New York or Boston. Um, peering with Akamai. Um, there's a lot of reasons to peer with Akamai and a lot of reasons we peer with ISPs. Uh, those include performance and redundancy. Uh, by removing intermediate AS hops, obviously we get uh, higher peak traffic and uh, better connectivity. We get closer to the end users. Uh, we get better ability to burst and deliver large traffic volumes on demand. Uh, it reduces costs both for us and for the ISPs we're peering with. So it's a really win-win situation. Uh, and if you are a, an ISP that already has an Akamai cache or many caches within your network, uh, it is still worthwhile to peer with us in public locations because often the public uh, caches that we build are larger and have more content than any of the caches we put into an individual ISP. And they also can provide backup functionality and additional bandwidth. And it doesn't really cost you anything if you're at the exchange point to also peer with us there. Um, in terms of performance, ISPs and end users benefit from more direct connectivity. Um, there's competitive advantage in that, uh, you know, if you're connected directly with Akamai, you can get the, our traffic faster than uh, any of your competitors that aren't connected with us. Um, you might be able to gain additional revenue from your downstreams. Um, you certainly will reduce your transit costs because every bit you get from Akamai is a bit you're not paying for over transit, um, and it'll increase redundancy. Akamai uses internet exchanges a little bit differently than a lot of others. Uh, Akamai does not have a backbone. 
every single IX instance and every single AAMP instance that we deploy is its own island. It has its own transit. Um, it pulls in the information to fill the cache over that internet transit and it then delivers it locally. Um, so there's no, um, you know, delivery uh, between different Akamai machines across some private backbone. It all happens over the internet. Um, Akamai does not usually allowance large blocks of space from its exchange um, connections because we usually don't have that many machines in any one location. So if you ha are attached to two different Akamai uh, caches, you will see two completely different sets of routing information from them. This does not mean you won't see a lot of traffic. A single IP address from a single server can serve uh, close to 10 gigabits of traffic today. Uh, no single cluster can accommodate all of the content that we serve. Um, clusters get more efficient with size. The, the larger the cluster, the more content it will have. Um, some content requires very specialized servers that are only present in certain countries. So even if you've got an Akamai cache in your local data center, you're still going to end up going elsewhere for some of the content that we serve. Um, and this can be due to licensing restrictions on the content uh, from the content owners. Uh, it can be due to our ability to deploy certain types of servers in certain places. Uh, there's a whole variety of reasons. Um, if you want to ho host an Akamai cluster, uh, you can talk to any one of myself or several of my colleagues that are here. Uh, we got a whole row of people back there, um, Amanda and Dave and several others. Um, so feel free to talk to any of us. We're happy to get the, the process moving for you. Um, once you've peered with Akamai, there are some do's and don'ts of traffic engineering that are really what I'm here to talk about. Um, a lot of the typical uh, BGP-based traffic engineering techniques do not do what you'd expect them to do when you use them with Akamai, and it's generally best to avoid them. Um, for example, AS path prepending. Um, is there anybody here who doesn't know what AS path prepending is? Great, I won't engage in a prolonged explanation. Um, meds, um, the use of meds is, uh, is also not going to help you as well as you might think. Uh, more specific routes are a really bad idea in most cases. Um, none of these techniques will have the desired effect the way you think it will. Um, Akamai uses mapping on top of BGP routing, so we may actually not use a route that's given to us. We may deliver no traffic over that route. Uh, we use BGP primarily as an input descri to describe to us you could deliver this traffic via this path if you want to, and very, very little else. So none of the metrics in BGP, none of the AS path hop counts, none of those things usually matter with Akamai. Um, and our mapping is very different from BGP routing because it takes many, many more factors into account. Um, these include latency, throughput, packet loss, CPU load on the server, hard disk space on the server, network utilization and many others. So here's what happens with some of the typical scenarios. Scenario one, inconsistent route announcement. Um, this, is, this is a favorite technique that ISPs use. Uh, they'll announce one route one direction and another route another direction. And um, the problem with that is that we will always send uh, the traffic to ISP A via transit provider 2002 um, because we're not seeing the, uh, the full route from transit provider 4003. So ISBA wants to balance the traffic between the two upstream providers. They uh, prepend, they apply meds. Unfortunately, this doesn't have any effect. So eventually they de-aggregate the 20 and advertise more specific routes to 3003. Now we get this. We're still seeing zeros from 4003, but we're, uh, we're now sending traffic to 2002, and he's sending the more specifics the long way around through 3003 instead of via the direct path. So you haven't actually achieved your, your goal in terms of getting the traffic rerouted. Um, all you've done is kind of add this extra step in there. Um, so you've got lost revenue for 2002, even though their peering and backbone is being utilized. If 2002 decides they don't like this, they may 
uh, block that path and, and then your traffic starts getting black holed and you wonder why you're not getting any traffic to those users from Akamai. So in order to get rid of traffic, they block it uh, and now your eyeballs aren't receiving it. Um, Akamai observes that ISPAs and users are unable to access some websites and now we send it um, the right way, uh, but Transit Provider 2002 still loses revenue. So don't assume a full table on any device on the internet. It's usually not true. Um, if you look at any three routing tables on the internet, uh, even on routers that think they've got full tables, uh, I will almost guarantee you that at any point in time you'll find some discrepancies in the routing tables. Um, filtering traffic results in, result in short-term black holing and long-term withdrawal of traffic resulting in revenue loss. Uh, incomplete route announcements, this is another good one. Um, ISPA is multi-home to transit provider 2002 and 3003. Uh, 2002 peers direct with Akamai, 3003 does not. ISPA announces different prefix to different ISP. ISPA can access the full internet. How will the traffic be routed to ISPA's end users? Well, as you can see, since they announced part of them through 3003, we send that part the long way around, and then we send the rest the short way. Um, Akanai receives DNS prefix 100.100.100.0 slash 22 from 2002, so we'll map actually all of the traffic for ISPA over that 2002 link, and the 3003 link will go underutilized. This can work perfectly fine, but the path via the transit providers might not be as good as the direct peering, and end users could have significantly worse performance. And what does ISPA do if the users complain? ISPA swaps the route announcements. Now they're both routed via IS2002 and the end users have the same performance. The end user is happy and closes the ticket. 24 hours later, Akamai is no longer receiving the name server prefix from 2002, Akamai maps the traffic off of ASPA to cluster B, where we see 3003's prefixes instead of cluster A, which only appears with 2002. ISPA will receive the traffic from a completely different source, potentially via all, all via AS3003 now, negating all of the traffic engineering efforts. So please don't split your end user and name server prefixes when you're doing traffic engineering. Um, before the Akamai mapping system refresh that we just talked about, it looks like this. Afterwards, it ends up looking like this. So our recommendation, please always announce complete routes to us everywhere. More specifics can be used, but splitting the prefixes might have undesirable effects. Uh, talk to us if you have traffic engineering or performance issues. We strive very hard to uh, get those corrected and to move the traffic in ways that work well for both you and us. Uh, we can definitely work together on traffic engineering and solving your problems in a way that actually scales and uh, provides a consistent result. Uh, the ideal solution, announce everything to both upstreams, work with the upstream and Akamai together and we'll balance the traffic and now everybody's happy. So summary, standard BGP traffic engineering doesn't have the expected results. Changes in announcements have delayed effects because of the way we treat uh, the information. Uh, mapping is based on resolving the name server, so splitting the name server and end user prefixes over different providers will have very unexpected results. Uh, not all clusters have a full table. Splitting more specific announcements over different links can cause unintended behavior, and announcing prefixes with hole can result in black holes. Talk to us about fine-tuning your traffic. And with that, I will open it up to questions. Alguna pregunta para Owen? Well, I have one. Well, okay. Maybe two. It depends. If you answer correctly, it's only one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, how. This is like one of those Cisco yeah, exams. Yeah. As, as far as I understand, uh, the, the ISPs cannot. Uh, uh, do traffic engineering from one side. Basically, like they cannot do play with BGP to do the traffic engineering. They have to uh, to uh, work with you to do that. Is the only way that they can do it? Like uh, well, a ticket to your they, they can try the BGP things, but they're usually not going to work the way they expect them to. 
because of the way our system is going to respond. And so it's definitely better if they work with us and we get the desired result together instead of uh, having them try this and then think it worked and then 24 hours later our mapping system catches up and rearranges things and now all of a sudden instead of the path that they wanted it to take over here instead of this path, this cluster way over here is serving them over this other path. Um, and, and that's usually not what they intended. So it's far better if they work with us and say, you know, I want more of my traffic coming this way. What can you do to help us with that? And we're pretty good about doing that. And uh, the second question is, have you consider? Oh, so I got the first one wrong? Uh, no, well, it, it, it's a follow-up Okay. So, so uh, have you consider? I? <laughs> have you consider uh, to um, uh, give BGP uh, signals a higher value in your algorithm to, 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 to let ISPs to play with it? Or is something that you said? Nah, well, we, we started out giving BGP um, higher uh, preferences and it, we turned, it turned out that didn't work well for us um, because a lot of times people do BGP things that they don't really understand the ramifications of. And so we found that mapping works better the way we've got it. And so we're probably gonna stick with that for the foreseeable future. Okay, I think there is a question over there. Bueno, hay una pregunta por allí. Yes, sir. Hi, so um, thank you very much for all the explanation. And I agree with you 100% about most of the time people don't know what they are doing with BGP. But something I don't understand is why if I found some kind of solution, it works for 24 hours, but after those 24 hours, then you do whatever you do and stop working, so. Well, it may or may not stop working. The reason is that um, there's a bit of a lag for our mapping system to process all of the data from all over the internet and recompute all of the paths and uh, latencies and bandwidth and utilization and packet loss. And that can take up to about 24 hours. So 24 hours later, the mapping system is gonna re-optimize everything and depending on what you did, the new optimization may react to what you did in a way other than what you expected. And so that's what the 24 hour lag followed by a, a change you didn't expect might be. Does that make sense? <laughs> Any other questions, comments, concerns, rotten fruit? Yes, uh, please use a microphone so that everybody can hear your question. Uh, sir, thank you for your exposition. Thank you. Uh, in order to see uh, the factibility of of making a peering project, it is necessary to know the trans what the type of transaction and the the price of it. I mean, the cost or how how can you we, recover we have, the uh, the money or how much can you ask or in between yeah, the range. I, I, I think I understand you're asking about the cost of peering with Akamai. Um, it's zero. We, we do not charge for peering anywhere. We have a completely open peering policy. Um, if you want us to place uh, machines in your network, um, if there's sufficient bandwidth to justify us doing so, we will do that for free. All we ask is that you provide what we call T-RAX, transit, rack space, electricity, and cross connects. If you'll provide those four things, we'll provide the hardware and the service for free uh, over that hardware. So we're, we're very, very open and very, very liberal about uh, our, our peering policy and about placing clusters within your, uh, your networks. Um, if you have any interest in following up on any of that, please see myself or any of my colleagues. Can the Akamai people uh, please stand up so that people know who you are? We've got lots of people here to help you, so. And they're all, they're all happy to talk to you. And uh, please make good use of them. OK. I think I'm being told I'm out of time. Yeah, we are hungry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Enjoy your lunch. Muchas Thank you very much. Un aplauso a Owen. Y antes de, de...